contributed to during that time as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Scar. Uh, Senator Fairvanti Wells. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Ms Rose, um, I have uh, been pursuing the issue of uh, the Vatican funds to Australia. I, I have to say and ask you this, do you concede that Austrac's reputation has been damaged following the discrepancy in the reporting of the Vatican funds to Australia? I think some of the headlines on the 14th of January uh, this year uh, were very damaging, and I'm concerned uh, uh, about that issue. And I would afford you the opportunity to make some comments. Oh, thank you, Senator. I, um, I don't disagree. It was um, an incredibly disappointing uh, error that occurred, and in my view, uh, the only time Austrac has tripped up in three and a half years I've been there, it was incredibly disappointing. And it was disappointing more for the fact that it was a simple human error because we answered a question on notice without the rigour that we would have applied for financial and regulatory uh, work. And that, that is very disappointing. Well, I won't uh, traverse more on that. I do, I do want to take you to some particulars of your letter of the 13th of January, because following uh, my questioning, you clarified with this committee uh, certain detail. Can I just ask you, uh, when did you first engage with the Vatican City State Financial Intelligence Unit, and did Austrac instigate the approach? Uh, I might go to Deputy, um, Chris, Deputy CEO Chris Collett for the dates we engaged with the Vatican FIU. Mr Collett. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Senator. Chris Chair. Collett, Deputy Chief Executive Officer, Intelligence. Um, Senator, we engaged directly with the Vatican FIU on a number of dates in early January. I'd have to take on notice the specific dates uh, that we were uh, working with them on this matter prior to Ms Rose's letter to this committee on the 13th of January. Okay, thank you, if you could do that. Um, on page two of the letter, it states that um, the statistics provided in our original response were generated for the specific purpose of responding to the question on notice. Um, these statistics were not used for, nor were part of any financial intelligence or regulatory analysis. I'm very concerned um, that um, table this is a document, the Overview International Funds Transfer Instructions 2010-2019, and the information that's contained in Table 5 there uh, very much, uh, and in fact, uh, it almost um, matches, uh, exactly matches the information that was provided to me in answer to a question on notice on the 16th of December. Now, that was the reason why I asked for a corrected version of this document. I would have thought that surely, given the damage that this error uh, has caused, and particularly in light of the concession uh, that Ms um, uh, Rose has indicated, you would want to do everything possible to ensure that the data in the public domain, if it was incorrect, would be corrected. I'm very concerned that if you got something as simple uh, wrong in relation to the Vatican, what else is wrong in this document? And surely you would want to make sure that data that is out in the public arena is is corrected, and that's why I asked you for a updated copy of this document, but you have refused to provide that to me. Uh, Senator, do you have a question? Well, I'm asking if you can provide it to me. Mm. Why, why won't you provide it to me? Ms Rose, would you like me to answer that question? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, Senator, the uh, document you're referring to was prepared for an FOI request. It was a very, very broad request that covered international fund transfers over many years over every country. We have identified the error in that. It is the same uh, error uh, that was in our initial response to your question on notice back in December. Um, the FOI request, if you refer to the back page, states that it was a um, statement of raw data. Uh, we don't intend to undertake a full analysis of that table. We haven't been asked for a, a further request. We have removed that. Uh, document from our website, though, because it does have the incorrect Vatican data. The correct numbers are in the uh, response from Ms Rose to this committee uh, on the 13th of January. Okay. So on um, page two, 
um, paragraph two, you refer to um, reporting data from international institutions. Um, can you just probably, given the time, take that on notice, um, what inter international <coughs> institutions you are referring to uh, in that paragraph? And also, um, why didn't Austrac's quality assurance processes identify this issue in the first place? Certainly, Senator, going to the second part of your question, our quality assurance processes should have identified it. As the CEO said, that was an error uh, and one that needs to be rectified. We have, in very careful detail, reviewed this process and updated and strengthened our practices when it comes to quality assurance. We deal with very large volumes of data. That data comes through Australian reporting institutions, but captured from uh, material they receive from across the world. It's important that we're able to manage uh, incomplete data sets and the quality assurance processes have been, of course, strengthened as a result of this matter. Okay, uh, can I just, um, I've got some more questions in relation to an article in the Australian of the 30th of December uh, last year, we risk being a dirty money haven. Can I just ask, does Austrac, um, I'm not sure if, are you aware of that article? Uh, I'm broad, it was, can you give me the topic of that article? I don't have it in front it of me. It says we risk being a dirty money haven uh, and uh, it basically talks about Russian money laundering. Uh, and it also talks about the prospect of uh, Mag Magnitsky laws yes. uh, in Australia. My question uh, to you is a twofold one. Um, your role in relation to investigation mm. on the Russian money laundering, and it was alluded to in that mm. article, but with the prospect of a Magnitsky uh, law in Australia and the prospect of it being enacted, um, are we sure that uh, Austrac uh, is a properly, properly equipped uh, to play probably a very mm. vital role in the detection and analysis of dirty money? Mm. In other words, Mr Collette, um, do we have your assurances that what is now being put into place mm. uh, will ensure that the, uh, the accuracy of your data and uh, again, restore that international mm. reputation that we have had uh, in relation to these sort of issues in the past. Mm. Thank you, Senator. Ms Rose, would you like me to answer that question? That's it. Sorry, Ms um, Senator, there, there are a number of elements uh, to your question. Uh, certainly, Austrac's broad role when it comes to these sorts of matters, and I, I don't uh, think it's appropriate to talk about specific investigations, is to provide financial intelligence uh, to our law enforcement partners who will then be looking at other aspects, including criminal intelligence uh, we work very closely with our international partners. Uh, there's a very strong uh, network of financial intelligence units uh, that we're a founding member of to facilitate uh, the exchange of intelligence and information. The manner in which we'd approach this sort of investigation would be the same as any other transnational serious and organised crime, and the role that we would play goes to the core function that we have. When it comes to your question about the strengthening processes that we put in place as a result of the discrepancy with the Vatican data, that's not relevant to this scenario in that this is about uh, financial intelligence work and the sort of analysis that is done in this context would have identified the sort of error uh, that occurred. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, um, Senator Ferravanti-Wells.